Today I'm excited to show you the program Stellarium. It's a planetarium-like software that's free that you can download on your own computer. This is going to be a great resource throughout this class. So I have it set as a default to show the sky as seen from Provo, Utah at the current time. Right now the sun's up, so we're not really seeing a lot of stars, so let's go ahead and move forward through time. The normal passage of time is you can start by hitting K, but to accelerate through time, you go ahead and hit L a few times. And as you can see at the bottom of the screen, it's now accelerating through time. I'm gonna do that a couple times and get time moving really quickly. And now days are passing by. To reverse the direction of time a little bit, I can hit J to slow it down or K to bring it back to the normal speed. Because I want to see the night sky, I'm gonna go ahead and set it back to its normal passage of time at K once I see the night sky. Once I'm here, I can move around the sky using my arrow keys and see what's up and what's going on. I can also zoom into objects. So right here, for example, I see Saturn and I can zoom into Saturn by selecting it, hitting the space key to center it, and then using function in the up arrow to zoom in. Right now, it's kind of bothering me that there's all of this information in the corner. So I can hit function F2, go to information, and then just pick short so it doesn't take up quite so much real estate. Okay, let's keep zooming in to Saturn. And this is the glorious Saturn. You can see, of course, that the sky is rotating, so it's hard to stay focused on Saturn. If I select Saturn, though, it'll go ahead and stay centered on it before I zoom in. As I'm moving around the sky, there may be some constellations that are familiar to you, for example, the Big Dipper. But a really good way to study is to try and find them and then to add the constellation labels and names so that you can quiz yourself. To add the labels, I hit V, so you can see here is Ursa Minor. And to see the pictures, I click C and it'll draw the outlines of the constellations. You may find that there, the ground is getting in your way. If so, just hit G and that the atmosphere is making it hard to see all the things in the sky you want to. For that case, just hit A and then you'll be removed from the pesky effects of the atmosphere. And then I can move around and see things that are, of course, below the, on the other side of the Earth. Here I'm going to select the moon to zoom into that. And as I zoom into the moon, I'll be able to see what phase the moon is in, which is pretty neat. If I change the date and time right here, to about uh, a week from now, I'll be able to see the moon change phase as I move the days. So you can see right here the moon changing phases as I add days. But I can also ask myself what phase was the moon in when I was born? And in that case, I'm going to go to, well, 1994 when I was born. And I was born in February, so February, and then the 10th. And I can see that when I was born, it was a new moon, which is pretty cool. And then I can go ahead and zoom out and see what the sky looked like the day I was born. So I can see right here the sun was in Capricorn, which is why, that, why I'm a Capricorn. So really cool features on this. Probably one of the things that people really like about this feature though is that you can use it for observational astronomy purposes more than just getting a feel for the constellations. So let's get rid of the constellation outlines for a moment to clear up the sky and add all of the nebula and galaxies that are around. And then I can absolutely zoom in on any of those that I'm interested in seeing. So just giving you kind of a tour right here. Um, Let's go ahead and zoom into the Pleiades cluster. So I'm going to select the Pleiades, hit the space bar to center that in my screen, and then zoom in, and I can see what the Pleiades would look like. 
I can do something similar with galaxies right here. I have the Andromeda galaxy, I'll center that. But this time I want to show you what it would look like if you pulled out your telescope. So, oh, also I'm going to get rid of the coordinate direction there since they're a little bit of an eyesore by hitting Q. So to zoom in in ocular mode or in telescope mode, I'm going to hit right here, ocular view, and it'll show me what the Andromeda galaxy would look like if I was looking at it through my telescope. In the option settings, you can absolutely change the specs so it looks like your very own telescope. So it's pretty cool right there. And I am like, hey, there's another galaxy right there. So if I'm looking with my telescope, I know how far exactly it's going to look. To leave an ocular mode, you're going to do the exact same thing and hit ocular right there. As an observational astronomer, usually when someone tells me what I'm looking for, they're going to give it to me in stellar coordinates or RA and declination. By hitting E, I can add that grid of RA and declination. And I'm going to add the ground back for a moment so I can see what's actually up in my night sky. And so if they told me that I had a declination of 50 degrees and a right ascension of six hours, I would say, okay, 60 degrees, it will be on this line. And 10 hours, it'll be, or sorry, six hours, it'll be right here. So I can go ahead and zoom into that part of the sky. Uh, same thing using FN and up arrowing. And I'm looking for something right in this part of the sky. It's a pretty cool feature to be able to use. Right here, I can see how everything is actually rotating around Polaris by accelerating time back, hitting L a couple times right here. But I can also see that Polaris isn't exactly at the North Celestial Pole. And I can see how, how the deep sky objects kind of group together right along the Milky Way. There are so many features available on this program. Let's get rid of the ground again. And one of the ones that I think you would really use as an observational astronomer is what we call night sky mode. So if you go down to the menu right here and click here for night mode, this is something that you would use if you actually had your laptop out with you as you were doing observations so that it wouldn't mess up your night vision. And um, that way you can be using it as you're positioning your telescope and finding some really cool targets. One of the other cool features is that you can actually change where you're located to be anywhere on the Earth. So if I do function F6 right here, I can choose anywhere here. I can go to Antarctica and see how none of the stars really rise and set. But right now what I want to do is I'm going to go to another celestial body. I'm going to go to Europa. So here I am on Europa, one of the moons of Jupiter. Let's get rid of the atmosphere and the equatorial lines here. And just have a look around. What does the sky look like in Europa? And the first thing I'm going to notice is Jupiter right here. Jupiter is huge and beautiful. And I can go ahead and watch through time what Jupiter will look like from Europa. And I can see right away that there are other moons rotating around Jupiter. And I can see that Jupiter kind of looks like it's going through phases. If I speed that up a little bit more, it'll be more apparent. I'm slowing that back down. Sorry about that. And I can see Right here in the distance, I can see Earth. And so I can zoom in to look at Earth from Europa. So I'm going to, again, click FN and then zoom into Earth after I center it. And zooming into Earth. And I can see that right now, Earth looks like it's in... A crescent phase but if I move through time a little bit I 
I can see the earth go totally dark, which is really exciting. Ah, the problem was that I had a ground on Europa, so let's go ahead and get rid of the ground right there. And let's try that again looking at Earth. Spacebar, and then zoom in. Oh, and I hit series. So there is definitely uh, a learning curve to this program that's pretty steep, and I have been playing around with it, but there, there's so much more to, to learn on it. I just want to point out two more features before I wrap up the video and two features that are really going to help you on projects this semester. So we're going to have a project about astrology and the different constellation stories. And under the Star Lore tab right here, there's a bunch of different constellation systems from different cultures. And so that's something that's going to be really cool. So you can say, oh, what are the constellations that the Inuit people have? And you can select that, hit C to draw the pictures. And you can see two placed far apart is the name of one of their constellations. Or you can go to the Navajo constellations. And I really like the Navajo constellations because instead of Orion, they have a constellation called the first slim one. Let's go ahead and close that. And then go ahead and move to see. this constellation, the first slim one, which is traditionally what most of us would think of as Orion because we're used to these Greek constellations. If you're looking for an object and you're not sure exactly where it is, this search window feature is really useful. You just type in the name of any object, any constellation, any planet, and it will help you find that object. So thanks for tuning in. I think this is going to be a great semester and have so much fun playing around with the different features of this console, of this project, uh, of this program there. It has a lot of potential to be really fun for you. So thank you so much for tuning in and I hope to see you in class.